Hello, good morning and welcome to our morning debate hosted by Feu de France. May I start by uh, welcoming you if you are watching this live online at the moment or indeed if you are joining us in La Gallery. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm sure we can promise you a very interesting debate this morning. Uh, now, Feu de France has brought together some very interesting people from both inside the railway industry and also outside the industry as well to comment on some of the issues facing the industry at the moment and the way that our guests are looking to the future as well. So allow me to introduce my guests this morning. Um, let me start with, um, on my right, Jean-Marc Janayac. It's lovely to have you here, the Chairman and CEO of Transdev. Um, as I'm sure you're very well aware, Transdev, a French-based international private public transport operator, operations in some 21 countries. Uh, a bit less, 19. Uh, 19. Um, France, North America, Germany, Central Europe, UK. Have I missed any out? Southern Europe. And uh, also Colombia. And, uh, in Bogota. <laughs> Not are, in Medellin. <laughs> I'm sure we will get on, on to later. You will, you will understand what the joke is about in a moment. Uh, incidentally, um, the first thing you will see as you go onto the Transdev website is a, a comment, a claim that says that they are the global benchmark in sustainable mobility. So no doubt we'll be uh, quizzing Jean-Marc about that a little bit later. It's really good to have you here. Thank you. And then sitting on my left, uh, this morning we have Jorge Perez, the planning director of Medellin. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, if you were uh, expecting the mayor of Medellin this morning, I must apologize. I'm afraid he had to change his schedule at the last moment and he has actually, unfortunately, had to return to Medellin. But I'm very delighted that we have Jorge with us this morning because um, as the planning director of the city and the whole, the metropolitan area, you're actually very well qualified and well placed to talk to us about transport yeah, so thank you thank you i'm very honored to be here i'm very glad to represent my city in this very important meeting thank you well if you are if you're not familiar with the area of medellin uh, let me just explain it's the second largest city in colombia to give you an idea of the sort of figures that we're talking about, uh, it's a population of some 2.4 million in the actual city um, and then 3.5 million in the whole metropolitan area. 2013, it was named as the most innovative city in the world by the Urban Land Institute. It's also the preferred corporate business destination and one of the best cities to live in South America. It also, as I know we're going to hear a lot more about, boasts the most amazing transport system as well. Now, Huha, I wonder whether you could uh, start by uh, explaining for us that actual that transport system, what you have built within Medellin. I wonder if you'd like to take a few minutes for us. Yeah, Medellin efforts with climate uh, are underpinned through the land use plan. And we have worked to, uh, for a long time trying to superate its social crisis in the city. And transportation systems has become one of the most powerful tools for social inclusion and for superating our critical moments. So let's say that for our city, transportation, it's more than mobility. It's uh, a way to build a collective uh, project together, including the communities that are living in the peripheries, bringing them the chance to transform their lives from being just inhabitants into citizens. So transportation systems has become a tool for citizenship. We have started in the past with the metro, the conventional metro system, but along the years we have developed some innovative uh, tools like the cable cars, the metro cable, these gondolas that goes on, on top of the mountains. As far as Medellin is located in a very narrow valley with a uh, strong altitude to the surroundings, and there we have uh, uh, neighborhoods. So metro, metro cables, then BRT bus system, then public shared bikes, and uh, finally we have recently finalized the construction of a new tram line. So we have five public transportation uh, uh, systems together to a uh, multimodal system. And this multimodal system is also integrated along the metropolitan region. We have 10 municipalities that are uh, a metropolitan region inside the Bali, and now they are integrated to the transportation system. 
And let's say that for us, planning is a very challenging thing because our cities grow a lot. Let's say that Medellin in the 50s used to have 350,000 people. And now this metropolitan valley has 3.6 million people. So in just 70 years, the population has grown a lot. So transportation, as I have said, it's uh, very meaningful and very powerful as a tool to build that society, to build that city. Thank you very much. It's really good as well as while you were talking, we were seeing some pictures of Medellin and the surrounding areas and can see what you've done. Um, the debate which we thought we would hold with you today, um, particularly with the ex amazing example of Medellin, is all about sustainable and social urban growth. And is it possible without public transport? Well, I think from what you were saying and actually saying you have five systems working together, which you have to have, to have that social urban growth Absolutely, with, without a doubt. Jean-Marc, I, I know, you, as you say, you've been working in Bogota. Um, the, the example of Medellin, just wonder what your thoughts were straight away on that. I think it's a very important but because it illustrates what the uh, key of uh, social and uh, sustainable uh, development in, in these uh, big cities, uh, uh, either in developing countries or in developed countries. And it's, uh, I think th the key of it, it's... Uh, to have a global view, uh, not only of uh, transportation, but of uh, uh, urbanization and, uh, and social links and so on. And perhaps to, uh, to, um, to give the importance of this uh, politics some, uh, some figures, uh, right now 54% of the uh, world population is in urban areas. And this uh, percentage is going to be a 66% in 2050. So it means that uh, it's a huge impact. And each year, there are 70 million people more each year in, uh, in cities. So it means that um, we have to solve the problem of pollution. And we must uh, remember that uh, uh, the uh, transportation uh, re represents 23% of the total uh, greenhouse gas emissions, so it's a huge problem. And afterwards, there is the uh, problem of uh, lack of space, of congestion, and so on. The uh, question of um, of uh, social links and uh, and how to uh, to have people uh, travel easily in this huge megalopolis to go to a uh, work, to have social, cultural, uh, uh, to s activities to see their friends and so on. So. It's a reason why um, the uh, UITP, the uh, uh, International uh, Union of uh, Public Transportation, has uh, decided to have a goal, and which is to double the share of public transport in the world in uh, the year 2025. Uh, uh, and so it means going from 16%, which is the share right now, to 32%. And at the same time, the uh, um, European Union has uh, produced a white paper and, uh, on, pop on uh, transportation, and they have asked to, that uh, more than 50% of all the uh, everyday travel are done by public, uh, public transport, because uh, public transport is, uh, is really the, the way uh, to, uh, to reach these girls. But public transport is all is the politics of uh, of authorities, and uh, what has been done in Medellin is quite interesting. But also, it's important. The role of the operators is also important, and we can uh, talk of it uh, 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 later. Uh, absolutely, we have the role of the politicians, we have the role of the planners, and we have the role of the operators as well. It's how everyone comes together. And particularly when we're talking about the systems that are used to keep railways, that vital backbone for whatever the systems. The figures that Jean-Marc was just quoting, we're trying to get more than 50% of people onto public transport. Do you have figures for Medellin? Do you, do you know sort of your percentage of how many people use public transport there? Well, in, in Medellin, just 14% of 14. the population uses private cars. Oh, we have a, a, a strong growth of the use of particular motorcycles, but the system integrated to the metro every day moves around one million people. And it's very important, as I have said, because it, it means also inclusive uh, development. But let's say that in Colombia, 78% of the population lives already in urban areas. 
and Latin America is the most populated urban continent in the world. So for us, transportation, it's uh, public transport is main, the main tool and 36% of the travels per day are developed by pedestrians also. So pedestrians, bike lanes, so non-motorized mobility has become m m more and more important for our people. Do you, do you think that's quite an interesting statistic that already in Colombia you've got, do you say 78% of people already living in urban areas? Um, because that's actually something that operators can learn from how Medellin and, and areas like that actually deal with that level of urbanization. Yes, and it, it's a key to, um, to, um, to, fa to, to favorish public transport. We, in UITP, the motto is, is uh, what we call to avoid, to shift and to improve. To avoid is to avoid the use of uh, uh, individual especially a uh, private car way of transportation. And the way to do it is to uh, conceive an urbanization which is more compact than a sprawl city. When you have a city with a uh, suburb, with uh, individual uh, houses and uh, without uh, compact uh, 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 development, it's impossible to have uh, an efficient public transport and people are obliged to use their private cars or motorcycle and so on. And the statistics uh, show that uh, when you have a, a more compact city, of the uh, public transport is more efficient. So the first thing to, uh, to have a sustainable, uh, in terms of social environment and so on, a city is to, uh, at, at the stage of urbanization, so it's, uh, it's really the, the role of uh, public authorities. And afterwards, the second step is to shift from uh, public transport to, to from uh, private transport to public transport. And also, it's, it's a role of, of the authorities. And afterwards, the improve is a role of operators and to, uh, to put together a more efficient, uh, low carbon, and so on. Um, ways of, uh, of transportation and it's uh, I think the, the key is to have a work in common but to, to have a, a planification in advance in order to link transportation with urbanization. <laughs> you, you are sitting there saying yes that's right that's yeah. right but do you think that you two different groups we have here perfect example planning operators do you think you do work closely enough do you think more could be done? In our city, it operates like that. Okay. But mainly because the metro and the BRT buses company is a public one. But we have been cooperating with the tr public, uh, private transportation, transport operators for a long time. And now we're f uh, ending some agreements to integrate the whole thing into the public system. But let's say that last December, we approve the long-term planning of the city, the land use plan, until 2027. And from our point of view, the best way of planning transport is planning, having a good land use plan. Because if you have a, a good land use plan, then transport will become easier, sustainable, and efficient. So when you're looking now ahead to 2027, what's the role of railways got within your plans then? We, we are working the, the plan to promote the transformation of the city with the support of mobility systems. So for us, is the main thing is the metro and the BRT systems, but we are proposing to multiply per 10 the bike lanes. We hope to have 400 bike lanes in the city. We will have a, a, a strong increase of pedestrian corridors, and we are working a lot to promote the reduce of the use of private cars. Mm. So that means equality, that means sustainability, that means to use in a more rational way our infrastructures and our investments. And that also means building public life. Because our mayor used to say, to say transport systems our public spaces. Mm, it's a very good way of looking at it. Yes, uh, to, to come back to the rail, uh, it's, it's obvious and the um, statistic uh, of uh, greenhouse gas emissions show it that uh, rail 
uh, it can be a, a metro, it can be a tramway, it can be a urban train, are uh, far less, um, uh, produce far less emission than, of course, private cars, but mm. even uh, buses. And, um, and um, very often it's, it's 20, 30 times more. In, with, it depends on, on the number of passengers within the tram and the, and the metro, but all the statistics are, are quite obvious. And even with electric car, um, a train or metro or tramway is uh, first far better mm. in terms of uh, emission, of uh, greenhouse gas emission and, of, and afterwards in terms of uh, using uh, the land, the, the, the property of the city and so on, it's uh, also uh, more, uh, more efficient. So I think that uh, um, the rail, but the rail cannot answer all the uh, uh, needs of, of the uh, transportation within city, but it must be, especially in large city as uh, it has been done in Medellin, the backbone of a public transport system because it's a huge, efficient, uh, strong and, and quick way of transporting a lot of uh, passengers uh, every uh, hour of the day. There really is those two key words, using it as the backbone and then on top of that, the integration with other systems yes. as, as, as well. You, you were yeah, about I, to... I wanted to, to say that one of the main things about the quality of life of our people in Medellin is transportation, the accessibility to the city. Because if you don't have access to public life in cities like ours, you don't have uh, human development. And Medellin has become the most qualified city in Colombia because of that, mainly because of that. What do you think other cities then can learn from the way that you have planned, very carefully planned, your five different systems, the rail and everything integrated? What do you think cities can learn from you? I, I think cities can learn that working with a long-term vision shared by the whole community, because the planning processes in Medellin are truly participatory, so we have the uh, participation not only of the public sector but the private, the academics and the social sectors. So we make integrated planning and with that we have continuity even though we, we can change our major, we have uh, a kind of city project with long-term vision. So what the, the world can learn from our experience is that using good planning with truly decisions about the uh, projects you have to build in a city can transform your reality. You obviously work all over the world and you have many examples from, from different countries. Um, not every country looks at public transport and looks at the railway in the same way as the citizens of uh, Medellin do. Just wonder what, you know, what, what your other experiences are. Um, I, I think that um, not all of the city has uh, have an integrated vision like uh, Medellin, but also other, other cities. And, but um, I would say that uh, many cities, and especially in developing countries, I'm thinking of India, uh, of uh, China, and, and, uh, and these Asian countries, do understand that without uh, a proper, strong, and it means real uh, public transport system, they first, they, they cannot have the economic development they, they uh, could have with this, uh, this uh, system because um, the uh, traffic jams are really uh, <coughs> a, a quite a difficult uh, barrier to economic development. And we have the example of Mumbai in India, which is one of the most populated uh, cities in the world where we are operating uh, a new metro that opened uh, two years ago. <coughs> Sorry, and this metro reduced the uh, um, the length of transportation of three hours a day for many of its users. It changed totally uh, the um, way of, uh, of living of the people. I have another example which is not uh, pollution, which is a way of life. In Saudi Arabia, as you know, the uh, women don't have the right to drive. So either you are rich and you have a driver, or you say a term. And the uh, construction of a metro in Riyadh is going to change fundamentally uh, the way of living of the uh, Saudi uh, uh, women because they are going to have 
the opportunity to travel uh, by, uh, by a public transport system. So there are many examples in the world where uh, public transport system and especially rail system are the key uh, on, on not only for environment uh, topics but also for economic and social development of the, of the inhabitants of these big cities. Well, it, it improves people's employment prospects if they can get further to get to work, education prospects. It, it just it, it improves and enhances life in so many different ways. And then when we look at the next few years, we are in the middle of a digital revolution at the moment. Now, I, I wonder how you feel the rail industry or the public transport industry is actually embracing this digital revolution and whether actually the rail industry is doing enough to um, harness all the power that we have of uh, the Internet of Things, of Wi-Fi, whatever. Jean-Marc? Yes, I think that um, we must have, um, as, as we have told, first the stage of conceiving the uh, system and afterwards making it uh, efficient. And to make it efficient, we have to have first uh, the uh, metros and tramways, the offer, which, which is on time, efficient, safe and so on. But n now it's not enough and people want to have the opportunity with their smartphone and there are smartphones everywhere, everywhere to, to get the uh, proper information, to know how to go from point A to point B, either with a tram or with a bus or with a bike and so on. And so, for example, we have developed a digital system of information, the one of Lyon in France, the one in Toronto in Canada, that gives to uh, the inhabitants of the city the opportunity to decide uh, when they are traveling, which is the best way. Yeah. I, is it the uh, tram, the metro, the bus, and so on? And to have the exact time of their arrival. And the next step is the, uh, to have on uh, the smartphone uh, to, uh, to have the ability to pay uh, the ticket when entering the bus or, or the uh, tramway. So it, it means we need to have a proper public transport system, but also the uh, way on the smartphone to get information and to get the way to pay for the uh, transportation. And, and you've managed to get that same way of paying across different methods of transport as yes, well. Yes, exactly. And, and I think technology will become uh, a very powerful tool to make more human cities. Because the smart human cities are an opportunity today. And that discussion complemented with transport systems and technology will become true. Because if you have that opportunity, you will live in a better way in the city and you have a more uh, human development. And, and I think which is uh, important is, is to have this system, is to have the, the work together with uh, local authorities that are able to build, mm. because you, you need to have a kind of organization uh, in terms of uh, ticketing the price, and uh, usually there are several authorities uh, that have to work together. So it's, it's, there is a kind of uh, institutional organization, the rules of governance, and to have operators. And we do think that uh, having uh, international operators like uh, Transdev is also a key because we are able to, uh, to give ideas taken from other continents, other cities, and to improve the uh, level of quality of this uh, system of transportation, of information, to link digital information with transportation and so on. And there is a kind of expertise which is important to, uh, to give to, uh, to very different cities uh, that need to have this expertise to enhance their uh, system. Well, then everyone benefits because you take examples from one part of the world, you can adapt them to, uh, to, other, to other areas, other, other cities. Um, how important, though, is it when you are dealing um, with, a, with a different city, with a different authority, to actually have that standardised good governance wherever you work? I imagine it's quite high up for you. Yes, it's, uh, I mean... It's, to have a good uh, transportation uh, system, you, you have to have an authority uh, that has the vision and also the uh, strengths uh, to organize. And it's, it's not natural. Uh, the the uh, nature is to, uh, to let uh, things go uh, in their own direction. So it means chaos and uh, it doesn't work. So you need to have uh, 
uh, a local authority with the strengths, and you need to have an operator with the uh, um, that, that knows the efficiency and also the ability to adapt uh, its solution to the uh, situation which is different from one place to the other. Mm. I, I, I saw you, you taking notes when, uh, when Jean-Marc was talking about good uh, governance. I, I, I was just uh, wondering if I could talk about uh, our major, Anibal Gaviria, has been promoting the concept of cities for life. If you talk about the urbanization process that we're living today, and you remember that the last uh, World Urban Forum that was held in Medellin last year was the, uh, developed under the uh, label development, uh, 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 urbanization and development, cities for life. We had a strong meeting last October in Medellin, and next year we'll be in, here in Paris. And our mayor proposes that Cities for Life means integrating planning uh, as a process into the concept of equality and life. And without transport, without accessibility, you will not have good cities. So Cities for Life means also good transport systems. Do you, uh, do you come across that sort of... Um that idea, that underpinning idea in other cities, or do you think there are other cities, other authorities, who actually need to have more of an integrated approach? I think it's a continuous uh, process, and uh, of course, uh, if you take the uh, share of public transport in, in um, uh, developed countries like Europe or, or Northern America, uh, it, went, uh, it went up, it, it is still uh, growing, in uh, developing countries, it, uh, it, the share went down because when uh, uh, these uh, countries and cities um, reach a higher level of development, everybody wanted to have a car, take uh, the Chinese cities mm -hmm. where there was only public transport and afterwards they had cars and uh, it, it's the uh, pollution right now in, in Beijing, not only of, uh, because of public transport, but partly because of, uh, not only because of private transport, but or part, uh, partly uh, because of it. And now they are taking measure and investing uh, deeply uh, to create metro lines and so on. So I think that uh, the obviousness of, of the need for environmental, but social and um, reason and, and uh, economic reason are pushing public transport. But the idea is to have a global system with rail system, backbone, and more um, shared transportation. For example, electric shared cars are also a way, a good combination with uh, a stronger public transport in suburbs. In, in suburbs, uh, it's very difficult to have uh, lines of, uh, not metro, of course, but even buses and so on. And uh, you have to imagine this kind of shared uh, system. And we have launched in uh, Washington in, in June a system of shared taxis, taking three, four, five different people coming from different places to go to different places because we think it's a good combination with public transport. So public transport cannot be the answer to all the situation, but a combination and digital services are key to make this combination with rail system, backbone, buses, and afterwards shared electric vehicles. I am uh, I'm sure the key for uh, this development in the future. We mustn't forget that people's attitudes change throughout the world, whatever city, whatever, whatever area they are living in, whatever country they are living in. Some people in, in some cultures look at public transport, look at trains in a very, very different way. And you'll have some areas, some authorities that have to battle against the attitude that trains are maybe for those who are not so well off or um, those who cannot afford their own private transport. I, I just wonder, Jean-Marc, seeing as you deal in some of these areas, you know, whether you have any examples of this? Yes, and I, I think the, the key uh, to ensure the uh, success of public transport in, uh, is when you have in, in the public transport of the city people that could afford to travel with other ways. So I think the key is marketing. 
marketing change the, uh, the, the, the image of public transport and makes it either trendy or uh, environmental conscious and, and so on. And when you are, uh, you are able to persuade uh, the people that could afford to have their own car and to travel by taxi and so on, to shift to public transport, you, you, you have won the, the battle. Are you, are you seeing that anywhere? Where are you seeing that? Yes, we, it's, it's um, the job we are doing. For example, in Paris, it's done. We have to do it in, in, in some of French cities that are not as big as uh, Medellin, but where we try to persuade uh, the local uh, well of people that uh, they have to, uh, to keep at uh, home the car and to, to take the tramways, for example. And for example, the rail system to put a tramway in the cities. In France, we have uh, destroyed all the trams, tramways we had in the uh, last century. And now all the big French cities uh, outside Paris have their own tramways. And we have seen mm. that uh, mm. the shift to the tramway yeah. was a good uh, way to persuade uh, people that could afford uh, to, uh, to have their car, to take their car, to use the tramway because it was not seen as a public transport for the poor people. And it's a key to, to have this shift. You're, you're nodding. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Medellin's identity today, it's linked to the metro culture. We call it metro culture because it's the more well-developed civic attitude of our citizens. And our major now is promoting what he calls Medellin's attitude as a, as a tool to create a, a transformation of our citizens' culture about cars because for us, car means wealth. Means it's a prestige that you have if you have a car. But we are working together with the whole society to transform that and understanding that using public transport will become more modern, more sustainable, more responsible, but also more wealthy for everyone. Because for us, cars means problems with health, with cost, because cars use a lot of urban space that it's so expensive. Safety, we have one of each four uh, uh, people uh, death in the city for accidents in the roads and the problem of equality. So if you understand that transport is, uh, it's a, a, a public transportation is a good solution for all those, those problems, is a good business for all. And for, for us, yeah. The next example, the next step will be uh, what we are working with uh, the uh, city of Helsinki in Finland, in Northern Europe, is mobility as a service. And the mayor of Helsinki tries to, to have a situation in Helsinki where owning a car is not going to be uh, uh, compulsory. And people are going to be offered different uh, systems of uh, 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 they, they, they pay. Uh, they are going to buy a service, and the service is to have access to, transport, but also to have access of hours of taxis, of hours of shared taxis, of hours of bikes, and then so on and so on. So you don't need to have a car. You you can have. A, it's not compulsory not to have, but you you don't need to have a car because you, you can subscribe to a service of mobility as now you don't buy a, a computer, but you, 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 you have a service. And the idea is to offer the backbone being the rail, but afterwards around there is a lot of different ways of uh, being mobile within the city. So it's mobility as a service. And, and everything totally integrated. It's almost, you know, you, you look at it like you buy a package for your internet or a package for, you know, your utility services in your home, but you're buying a whole transport package. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful model. I mean, yeah, sounds it's, good. Sounds great. It sounds great. Absolutely. Gentlemen, we are very sadly out of time this morning. It's been really very, very good to hear your, your experience from Medellin, your experience from all over the world. I wonder whether I could just end by asking you both. I mean, we, we've been talking about how vital it is to have 
the railways as that backbone of public transportation. Um, I just wonder what you would like people to take away from this morning, the most important thing that you think railways can contribute. The experience of, of my city is that Medellin became a good, an important city because of the railway. But uh, sadly, Colombia destroyed the railway network in the 60s. So we are rebuilding it, but our plan our dream is to have a complete railway network inside the metropolitan region, connecting the 10 municipalities and also con connecting the, the rest of the region. So we think that with the support of the railways, we will have a better city, better life for all, and we will have a more e uh, uh, equal society. Yes, the idea is that uh Public transport is, is a key for a sustainable development of cities. And uh, I would say that cities, not, huge, not even huge, but of some hundred thousand inhabitants, need at least a tramway system, afterwards metro. And this rail system are the backbone of public transport that is uh, compulsory for a sustainable development. Railways is the backbone. Railways have made your people's life better. I think that's an excellent place to leave it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.